Hello everyone and welcome to Sonic Advance 3 on the Nintendo Game Boy Advance. I am One Wild Sheep yet again and today ladies and gentlemen we're going to be tackling the finale of the Sonic Advance trilogy and what I consider to be the weakest of the Sonic Advance games but also quite possibly the most ambitious of the games. What can I tell you ladies and gentlemen and this game does also sport a multiplayer option because unlike Sonic Advance 1, unlike Sonic Advance 2, this game is based around multiplayer platforming and that by basically we get to choose multiple characters which the majority of which are locked again at the start. Sega stop doing this, give me all the characters at the beginning god damn it. Yeah. But yeah, we basically have to choose between two characters to play as, and uh, that's basically what we're going to be doing throughout the course of the game. It's kind of like Knuckles Chaotix in the, in that regard, where in Knuckles Chaotix you had to have this uh, combi catcher machine, and you had to basically choose a party member to work with. In this one, it's kind of sim similar, except it's actually a player select screen, and uh, each character you have in the game will have their own unique abilities and attributes, which I will be talking about as we get closer and closer into the playthrough. What can I tell you, ladies and gentlemen? What can I tell you? Indeed! But basically, yeah, Dr. Eggman is up to no good yet again, and he's uh, used this, this machine to do something. I don't know what it does, but basically it backfired and now all of the world is split up into seven different areas. And basically we need to go to each of these seven different zones in order to fix the world and put it back together. This is only really ever said in the instruction manual, so whether or not it's actually a legit story from the Japanese version, I have no idea. But uh, yeah, basically the world is shattered and we need to go out of our way to fix it. This is actually a plot point that they uh, reuse much later on in uh, Sonic Unleashed. But as you can tell by here, I can actually utilize Tails as my partner in order to use special abilities. Tails has the ability to do a high jump if I uh, hold down the R button and grab him, and if I jump while doing that ability, I will also be able to fly in the air as you would normally expect from Tails, so it's pretty damn dope. And this game is just... F this game is just made for the whole uh, working with your teammate and getting the right combo to get all of the collectibles and whatnot in the area. Speaking of combos and speaking of collectibles, we found a chow. These are the new ways to get into the special stages, ladies and gentlemen. And while a lot of people absolutely despise the chows as a method to get into the special stages, I still prefer them to the special key system for one sole reason. There's 10 chows to collect, but you don't need to collect all of the chows in a single run. You can go back to a stage afterwards to pick up a chow that you missed. This makes it so much easier to collect the special stage is and get access to the special stages to collect the chaos emeralds, you know, ladies and gentlemen. But basically you need to find all of the chow. Once you found all of the chow, a key will spawn in to the stage. And once you get the key, you'll be able to access a chaos emerald special zone. What can I tell ya? But uh, this stage is very... Well, actually, I say the stage. This game isn't the best in terms of level design. Like I said, this is my least favorite title in all of the Sonic Advance trilogy. And it's you... Well, it's... I say it's largely. It's entirely because of the level design. And right now, you might think, yeah, it doesn't look too bad. But earlier on, we've already seen an instance where I can die. This game likes to crush you, ladies and gentlemen. It likes to make you die a lot. And the level design is extremely, extremely unforgiving. And... For the most part, pretty much unfair, you know, there's, there's enemies that blindside you all the time, like, like that guy, you little prick. Uh, <laughs> there's loads of pits and stuff that you'll, you're likely to fall into, you know, and alongside all that, you have to go out of your way to find all of these chow, which means you're probably going to die just trying to find the chow, because obviously... This is a game where you have to explore uh, the levels, and if you actually explore the levels, you're going to be jumping up, and you are going to be jumping down a lot. Whenever you jump down, it's kind of obvious that you're going to die a few times looking for these things, because, well, there's bottomless pits, like I said. So, uh, yeah, this game's this game's level design isn't its strong suit. The, the game's level design is not the best thing in the world, so... I'm not fond of it, what can I tell you? But you'll sometimes occasionally see me do a yeah, and I start spinning towards the right of the screen or the left of the screen as Sonic. Uh, this is a holdover mode, f mode move from Sonic Advance 2 that only is available whenever Sonic is teamed up with Tails. You know, ladies and gentlemen, 
And for the most part in this playthrough, I'm going to be swapping out as many character combinations as I can to show off as many different character types as possible. But when you get Chows, if you go to the giant ring in the hub world, you gain access to this room and you will be able to see how many Chows you've collected. And if you press select, you'll find a little handy dandy map that'll tell you which zones each of the Chow are located in. Which I do appreciate, it does make the collecting of these Chows a lot easier and I get, like I said, I honestly find this to be a lot, lot more simple in comparison to the Sonic Advance 2 system where we had to beat every stage in one run. This, this is like like I said, when I played Sonic Advance 2 on the actual Game Boy Advance, I've never put I never beat it, hundred percent. Well, I tell a lie, the game did glitch up once and it did unlock everything by accident, but I still don't know how I did that. But um Yeah, Sonic Advance 3 is a lot better in that regard. What can I tell you? What can I tell ya? Indeed. Mm, yes. But anyway, add Sonic with your partner. If you hold down the R button and use him as to your advantage, he basically speeds you up to maximum speed. Which actually brings me up to the top left corner of the screen. Which, if you can notice very well, there is an S icon with Sonic shoes. You can either... That's basically your character type. You can either be a speed type, a power type, or a flight type. And these will usually usually don't have that big an impact but speed types are the only ones that can actually go ultra fast with the after images power types are the only one that can break through certain doors and flying type is as far as i can tell i i don't know what the flight type does i honestly don't think it really matters with the flight but um yeah basically you're either sp the only ones you really need to pay attention to are speed and power, and if we ever come across as a character type that's flight, I would advise swapping over to a different character combo, because uh, flight type isn't really all that useful, I'll be perfectly honest. But I digress, I digress, indeedio. But one thing I will absolutely praise this game for is its soundtrack. It has quite a high energy, up tempo soundtrack that sounds pretty damn tubular to listen to, I will be honest. I love the soundtrack of this game through and through. And while some tracks I'm not too fond of, and if like and some tracks I just flat out can't remember off the top of my head. You know, the, the tracks that are good, the tracks that I do remember and I do recall, I do quite enjoy them. What can I tell you? Which, to be fair, is a granted because it's a Sonic game. Sonic games generally have a good soundtrack. Is there's very few games in this series that don't have good soundtracks, you know, folks. But I digress. But yeah, uh, collecting all of the Chow can be a little bit annoying depending on what characters you choose, and sometimes depending on what characters you choose, you actually are locked out from collecting Chow in one run, which is. Really annoying, I will be perfectly honest, because I sometimes you'll find Chow's locked behind in you know extremely powerful doorways, and the only way you're gonna gain access to those super doorways is if you use a power character. And honestly, I just I just don't want to sit down all the time and swap between characters all the time and just go in and out of levels just trying to find the right Chow. I I would honestly prefer it if all the Chows were out in the open that any character could pick up. And uh, you just need to find the right route to grab him. I would have preferred that, but uh, I digress. Well, I say that, but personally, I would have preferred if we didn't even have to collect the Chow, because the Chow is... While I prefer collecting the Chows to uh, the special keys in Sonic Advance 2, I personally still think that uh, there's just too much of a roundabout method to get around, you know? There's too much of a roundabout method to get the Chaos Emeralds, and I don't want the Chaos Emeralds to be a chore. I don't want to be bored and frustrated out of my mind trying to collect these damn things. Like, if it was up to me, I'd much rather just uh, have a simple get to the gold ring with 50 rings sort of objective or something along those lines. That's still challenging in its own right, and then I can also... It's, you know, it's challenging, but it's not too challenging. You know, ladies and gentlemen, and I'm more likely to get the Chaos Emeralds. Although I say that, but like I said, this game is filled to the brim with dickish level design, so it's not always guaranteed you will gain the right amount of uh, things by the time you reach the goal, but... I digress, what can I tell ya? But anyway, this is stage by here, this is Route 99. This is basically the starting level that uh, you get to know and love. It's kind of unique because it's a city level, and honestly, I, I quite like the aesthetics. It looks pretty damn nice, but um, 
Yeah, this is the obligatory starting level, so obviously easiest stage in the game, you're not gonna have too much trouble here and there, but you're still at risk of dying, and that's the big difference between this and Sonic Advance 2 and this and Sonic Advance 1. Because while in those games you were actually, you, you still had risk of dying obviously if you were terrible to the game, but there weren't any cheap deaths. Sonic Advance 3 is littered to the brim with cheap death. De de cheap deaths and on my first playthrough I died almost immediately in Route 99 because of a crusher block that I wasn't able to see because it was off the screen you know ladies and gentlemen but I digress anyway this by here is a mini game room there are a couple of these littered throughout the course of the game you have one enemy room where one enemy room one special room where you have to destroy the enemies and then there's another one available to you where you have to break a capsule uh, basically your reward for doing these is gaining access to extra lives which uh, Basically means you're not going to see me doing this too, too much during the playthrough. In fact, I'm only ever going to show this off once. But, um... You know, it's a thing that exists. It's a, it's definitely a thing that exists. And I figured I might as well show it off. It's not something I would recommend going out of your way to bother with, though. Because if, if you're in, if you're real, if you're decent in the game, you should be able to get extra lives just, just through normal means. Like collecting rings and what have you, but... You know, if you find yourself ever getting low on lives, this is a room I recommend going into. You may be able to get a couple of extra ones, you know? And generally, you just have to go through this maze, destroy the right badniks, and uh, when you destroyed all of the badniks in a given room, bada bing, bada boom, you get awarded. See, I got two extra lives for that. Whoop de doo. I usually prefer the other mini game type that you can do because it, it I, I generally find it a lot more. Um, I generally find that the other, the second mini game type just gets you a lot more lives with a lot less effort. I will show that off eventually, just not right away. I can't remember when the next, where that thing is actually anyway, so. But I digress. Anyway, time to swap back the characters out and uh, don't worry folks, after a certain while I'm going to start cutting these out. It's only just during this first part where I'm going to leave a lot of this stuff raw and unedited because uh, you know, you gotta get a feel for what the game's like, you know, I can't just start cutting away lily grilly. I will be doing that from part 2 onwards, you know? Also, I think, anyway, I think it's part 2 I start doing that onwards. But one thing I also don't like about this game, ladies and gentlemen, they bring back three acts for each zone. Now, normally in a Sonic game, you have Act 1, which is your typical, um... You know, normally in a Sonic game you have two acts. Act 1, which is your introductory act, Act 2, which is your challenge act, and then the boss. In this game, they bring back the three acts from the original Sonic game, which I I don't like. I don't like it. You just It just means that you stay in each zone for way too long, and it's way... I, I'm just really not fond of it, personally, having three acts, but... Uh, there we go, that's the new minigame, that's the capsule one, as you can tell, five lives for literally a couple of seconds work, so uh, if you want to gain extra lives quite easily, I recommend going to that one minigame all the time and just constantly replaying it, you will always gain extra lives, what can I tell ya? What can I tell ya? Indeed. But well, to be honest, one thing I do love, one thing I really do love is the fact that each individual act of this game, each of this game, of each zone, has its own remixed version of whatever zone theme is playing. For example, the Route 99 theme, the da -da 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 sort of tune, is still here, but remix is faster paced. And it, it, I don't know, I just like that. It, it really gives you a feel of, uh, oh god, gotta go fast. We're almost done, Tails. Wow! You know, ladies and gentlemen, which I do love. I honestly do love that. It's uh, it's one of the things I really like about the. Not so much the classic games, there's only really Sonic 3 of the classic games that did that, but it's one of the things I love about Sonic 3, you know, and actually Sonic 3D too also did that. Where you got into a new act, you got into a new segment of the stage, and it gives you a remixed version of the same tune. I don't know, I, I it's just a little it's just a little thing I've always liked about certain parts of the series, you know. There's not many games that actually do that, but you know, the games that actually do it, I do love and I do appreciate them for doing it, you know, ladies and gentlemen. But I digress. Also, the sort of seesaw thingy what's is from Hilltop Zone make a return here too, folks. And uh, they're every bit as annoying as they used to be back in the day, you know? I don't like the those uh, seesaw thingies whatsoever. They're really... Ugh. They just slow down the pace for me, and I, I've, I'm, I'm just not fond of them. <laughs> Maybe if they did something interesting in terms of platforming, I wouldn't mind them too much. But nothing. they never really use those... Um, 
that's the word I'm looking for. They never use the seesaw things to their advantage, you know? They never really do anything special with them. They never do anything pretty neat with the level design. They're just sort of there. And it just slowed down the gameplay for no good reason. And it, I don't know. It, 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 just, it, it just sort of bugs me a bit, you know, ladies and gentlemen. But for the most part, Sonic and what Sonic and Co. also just control similarly to what they do in Sonic Advance 2. It seems like the developers wanted to do a mix of the speed from Sonic Advance 2 and the platforming of Sonic Advance 1 because I know when Sonic Advance 2 originally came out, there was a lot of uh, backlash about them trying to focus too much on speed over platforming. And honestly, I do prefer pla the platforming of Sonic Advance 1 over the speed of Sonic Advance 2. But, I prefer the speed of Sonic Advance 2 over the platforming of Sonic Advance 3. You know, ladies and gentlemen, because, uh, again, like I said, the level design is... It's not that good. And honestly, th this game's level design could have been solved with two things. One, maybe uh, maybe zoom out the screen a little bit, cause, so you can see more Crusher deaths and Badniks, out, you know, from above you and what have you. And two, maybe... S Maybe just slow down the gameplay a bit because the gameplay is just way too quick to facilitate the level design right now This level design is based around platforming, but the speed's extremely quick Which just messes with the flow of everything, you know like back in Sonic the Hedgehog 1, 2, and 3 I had the issue as well where uh, you were likely to run into enemies all the time if you were going too fast This game just basically takes that issue with the first three Sonic games and tenfolds it, you know, it's it really makes it insanely difficult to avoid upcoming obstacles. And it's not like you can simply go slow either, because the stage design is... While it's while it's made more for platforming over speed, it's still very speed-focused as well. So it's, it's a bit of annoyance, to be honest. But anyway, what you saw me pick up was actually a key. Once you collect all the chows in the zone, those keys will appear, which will enable you to go to a special stage located somewhere in the hub world, like this one, for example. Just jump on it when you have the key, and you will be able to gain access to the special zone. And the special zones are pretty much as you'd expect from all the Sonic games up until this point. You basically have to collect enough rings, bada bing, bada boom, once you've got enough rings, you get a Chaos Emeralds. But I do love the design of this one, I love the music of this one, I just love the way this special zone looks. This is definitely, by far, the best special zone in the Advanced Trilogy, I will be perfectly honest. I just love the way everything looks and it just all works very well. Obviously the, the, sh the usual uh, depth perception issues that were in Sonic Advance 1 still make a bit of a return here, but they're not nearly as bad, you know, ladies and gentlemen. And everything's just a lot more clear in regards to uh, finding out where to you know, where to go to pick things up. And of course, you're riding on the tornado itself. Now, if you fly into the rings with the tornado, the tornado will not pick up the rings. Only you, the main character, can pick up the rings. So you need to make sure that you actually do put Sonic in the way of the rings themselves. And from time to time, you'll come across these giant blue floating gate things. If you go through those, you will actually be going to booster mode. You will go into your X wing bloody... I, I don't know what it's called. The... the, the, the Basically, the Tornado 2 battle mode from uh, Sonic Adventure 1. Whenever you're in that mode, you will go faster, but every ring you collect will be multiplied by two. So, uh, for example, here we are, boo -ba -da boo and there we go, two extra rings for every one we pick up, which really greatly increases our ring count on the counter, you know, ladies and gentlemen. All in all, I like these bonus stages. They're not the worst thing in the world, they're not the best thing in the world, but they do their job just fine. What can I tell ya? What can I tell ya? Indeed. Basically, they're pretty fun. They do get a lot more challenging later down the line, though, so, uh, you know, expect to fail a couple of times on later, you know, on later run-throughs, but, uh, for now, that is basically it for this act, and now it's time to take on the b b b b b fight, ladies and gentlemen. So let's get going, shall we? Yes, oh my, mm. This is the boss room! You must clear Act 3! Oh, you have to clear all the acts in order to open up the boss, that's basically what he said. And, uh, the boss fights are probably one of the strongest aspects of Sonic Advance 3, ladies and gentlemen. The boss fights are pretty damn amazing in comparison to the boss fights of Sonic Advance 2. They're 
pretty good in comparison to Sonic Pants 1 as well. They, these boss fights are pretty awesome. I do like them. Anyway, this thing by you, this robot is Gameroll. Gameroll is actually a remake of the robot Ch Emerald, which if you remember back in Sonic of uh, Sonic Battle, the Sheepish Look and I did, I mentioned there was a robot called Emerald in there. Is there um is there an actual reason why he looks and so sounds very similar? Well, yes, because Eggman basically took the destroyed remains of Emerald from Sonic Battle and refocused him into a battle robot of his own. And uh, basically, every one of the Eggman's boss fights by here is going to use Emerald in some way, shape, or form, which I do actually quite like. I like the idea of this. But um, for this first boss by here, it's very easy. It's just a giant hammer. What I advise is uh, moving to the left and right of uh, wherever Eggman usually goes to um, whack his mallet. Basically, you use the wax it to the left or right. And try and uh, bait him to whack close to the ground, which will enable you to be able to boop him in the head, you know? Basically, stand close to his body until he hammers down and then jump on him, and eventually you will go down without too much of a fight. It's an easy first boss, but, uh, well, I'd say it's, it, it can actually give some tr people trouble. I, I've seen people have trouble with this boss fight before, but, um, you know, it's still a pretty fun boss, and it is the easiest boss of the game, being the first boss of all. So, uh, yeah, can't complain too much. But with that, ladies and gentlemen, we have finally finished the first zone of Sonic Advance 3, and we are moving into the second zone, which people who are fond of the series may actually quite like, because it is a bit of a neat callback, I'll tell you that much. But with that, thank you all for watching, hope you all enjoy, don't be sheepish people, and I'll catch you all again. Bye!